Hi everyone and welcome to another PAT Problems video. My name is Helena and I'm the Access and Outreach Manager for the Department of Materials here at the University of Oxford and today we're going to be taking a look at question number 18 from the 2013 PAT paper. So let's have a look at what this question is asking. So in this question we have a projectile of mass 0.2 kilograms which is moving at a speed of 122 meters per second towards a ball of mass 12 kilograms which it hits. Now the ball is hanging on a massless string of fixed length as shown in this diagram and we're also told that the projectile is moving at the height of the centre of mass of the ball and we're also told that after the collision this projectile becomes embedded in the ball and they'll move following the collision as one entity. Okay so we're being asked to find the maximum height that the ball with the projectile embedded inside reaches above its original position. So let's have a think about what's going on during and after this collision. So this diagram shows the before of the collision. So we have our projectile, mass little m, which is 0.2 kilograms, moving in this direction with a speed u, which we are told is 122 meters per second. And that hits our ball of mass 12 kilograms here. Okay. So what's gonna happen after the collision? So let's draw another diagram. So we still have our ball here, and now we have the projectile embedded inside. So we have a total mass for this new system of big M plus little m here. And how is this gonna move? So immediately following the collision, it's gonna have a velocity in this direction, let's call that V. Now, because this ball with the projectile inside is on a string, it's going to swing a bit like a pendulum. So it's gonna move in that sort of a direction and follow a curved path like this until it reaches a maximum height, let's call that H max, at which point its velocity will be zero. And this is the height that we're being asked to find. So the easiest way to go about thinking about this is to consider conservation of momentum and think about what the energy is doing following the collision. Okay, so first things first, let's consider momentum. So conservation of momentum. So before the collision, we have a momentum of little m u. And following the collision, we have a momentum of big M plus little m times v, this initial velocity here. So now let's think about the energies going on here. So the kinetic energy during the collision, so going from this before to the after, is not conserved in this case. However, the energy following the collision, so in this system here, is conserved. So immediately following the collision, this ball with the projectile is going to have a certain amount of kinetic energy as given by its initial velocity here, v. Now, as it moves, this kinetic energy is going to transfer into gravitational potential energy in order to increase its height above its starting position. And at this point, h max, where I've already said its velocity is zero, all of that initial kinetic energy is going to have been transferred into gravitational potential energy to increase its height to the maximum value. Okay, so let's write that mathematically. So it's kinetic energy following the collision, half mv squared. So it's a half times the sum of the masses here, times v squared. And like I say, at the maximum height, where its velocity is zero, all of that energy has gone into increasing that height, so gone into the gravitational potential energy, which is mgh. So we have the sum of the masses times g times h max here. Now we can cancel through the masses, and we want to rearrange to find h max. So if we do that, we find that h max equals v squared over 2g. So now we just need to find an expression for v here, this velocity following the collision. We're told all the other values, we're told the two masses and we're told u, but we're not told v. However, we do have our brilliant little conservation momentum equation up here, which does have a value for v in it. So if we rearrange that for v, we find that v equals little m u over big M plus little m, okay? And if we substitute that 
into our equation for h max, we have h max equals one over two g into little m u over big M plus little m all squared. So notice how I'm still working in algebra here. So I could have tried to put in numbers here since we're given all of these values. However, I know that it makes it less easy to make errors if we work in algebra until the very end. So if you put in numbers here, you're likely to, I don't know, maybe make a calculator error or copying error when you're moving from this line to the next. So it's always best to work in algebra until the end and then put the numbers in. So that's what we're going to do now. So we have all of these values. They're up here. So now I'm going to put the numbers in. So if I do that, I find that h max equals 1 over 2 times 9.81, which is the value for g that I'm going to use since there isn't one specified in the question. And that equals not uh, putting the rest of the numbers in is 0 0.2 times 122 meters per second divided by 12 plus 0 0.2, the sum of the masses there, all squared. Now, if we put that into our calculators, we find that that gives us a value of 0 0.2038 dot, 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 dot there. So if we round that to a reasonable number of significant figures, let's take two, we find that H max is about 0 0.20 meters to two significant figures. And that is the maximum height reached following the collision. And that's what we've been asked to find. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you for watching and join us again next week for another Pat Problems video.